Hello and welcome to this first look at Pivotal Build Service. I'm Dan Basket, Tech Marketing at Pivotal Software. In order to understand Pivotal Build Service, we really need to take a stroll down memory lane. In the Cloud Foundry world, build packs manage the language and framework dependencies for an application. The platform automatically associates the application with the right build pack and then transforms the source code into a container. Build packs support the most common enterprise frameworks and runtimes like Java, .NET, and Node.js. Typically, platform security or infosec teams control the supported build pack version, and then developers can just leverage them via CF push. Enterprises have used build packs millions of times to transform source code into containers, and they've been a great solution. But you know what? It could be better. Pivotal recently teamed up with Heroku to evolve the build pack concept and bring this proven automation to even more platforms like Kubernetes. This effort became a CNCF project known as Cloud Native Build Packs. Its goal is to bring the proven power build packs to the world of OCI containers. CMVs offer greater modularity compared to traditional build packs, meaning operators gain more control over what's in any given build pack. For developers, CMVs are also a lot faster, and they run in local dev environments to speed troubleshooting. That brings us to the introduction of Pivotal Build Service. The build service provides a layer of automation and operational control that enterprises need to utilize cloud-native build packs at scale. Now let's take a little deeper look at what this standalone project brings to the table. Pivotal Build Service brings us three enterprise benefits. First, a declarative configuration model. In Pivotal Cloud Foundry, we have an imperative model. The user instructs the platform to run a container build via the CF push command. The same is true with cloud-native build packs, where you issue builds and rebase images. With Pivotal Build Service, the image config defines where a container is born, source code repository, and then where it will live, container registry. It also has the concept of a team config, which provides access control to the image configs themselves. Next, consistent and up-to-date container images. We'll see this in action in the demo in just a few minutes. Once you create an image configuration, the service then constantly builds against it to resolve discrepancies between the declared config and what's actually running in your system. So whether you make source code changes, OS packages are patched, or build packs are updated, the container images will always be kept up to date. And finally, operators can control access to the build service teams, and they'll be able to define build configurations that have supported combinations of dependencies. Let's take a look at what we will demo. I have a build service installation up and running in Pivotal Container Services and Kubernetes. The remainder of this video will show three demonstrations of the power of Pivotal Build Service. First, we will build a team config and an image config and watch our first container being built and posted to our container registry. Second, we'll make a change to our source code and watch what happens. Then, finally, we will demonstrate how you would address a JDK CVE with Pivotal Build Service. So now armed with all the background, let's dive into the demo. Let's take a look at a template team config and image config before we create our own. This is a template for a team config. It includes the name of the team, the target container registries, any artifact registries in use, and the parent source code repository. The image config is defined on a team basis. It includes specific source code repository to monitor and the name of the resulting container image. Now let's take a look at the files I built to drive the demo. This is a pretty simple team config. Our team will be known as the demo team, and we'll be using Docker Hub as the container registry and GitHub as the source code repository. This is our image config file. The team wants Spring Pet Clinic to be built, so that Git repository is added, and then the container should land in our Docker Hub organization known as Pivotal Team. And that's all there is to it. The PB, or Pivotal Build command, will be our interface into the Pivotal Build service. Like the files we just created, it knows about images and teams. Our first step is to apply our image and team configs, and this creates required resources in our Pivotal Build Service instance on Kubernetes. Once our image configuration is applied, our first build will be initiated. The PB image builds command can be used to see what's happening on a particular image. And as promised, build one is in process. If we want to watch what's going on under the covers, PB image logs with the build number and a minus F will string the logs to our console. Here you can see all the layers of the build pack being applied. I sped it up just a little bit in the interest of time, but as you can see in the log, the first build was successful. 
If we want to double check, we can go back to the PB image builds command and verify that it was a success. Since we defined a container registry, we can look there to see if our image was uploaded. Here's our Docker Hub account with our Pivotal Team registry, and we can see our Spring Pet Clinic image was created just a few seconds ago. If I drill into that, I can see that one version of this image has been uploaded. Okay, now that we have a Docker image uploaded, let's test it out. If we do a Docker pull of the image, and wait for that to pull down. Now let's do a Docker run and test it out. We'll map the port 8080 to the actual port 8080 on my local host. And wait for it to start up. Once it's started, we can go bring up the UI. And here's the Spring Pet Clinic. And clicking around the GUI, everything seems to be okay. Now we can move to the next step of our demo, which will be making a change in our GitHub repository to trigger a new build of our image. So our first step is to clone the repository. So we'll grab the URL, then issue a git clone. Next, we want to go edit one of the files. In this case, I'm going to edit one of the welcome messages, so it'll be easy to see that we've actually made the change. So inside our message properties, instead of welcome, we can make this welcome to Spring Pet Clinic, version 2. Now with the change made, we can then go do a git commit. And then push those changes up to our GitHub repo. Now with that change pushed, we should have a build start. So let's watch PB image build. We still see our build one going there. And now build two is actually started. So if we do our PB image logs command and change to build two, we can watch the process of that build. Now this build will go much faster and we'll see why in just a second. The build service is only recreating the layers that's changed, so it's going to reuse these cached layers that you see here at the bottom of the logs. If we check a pb image builds command, we'll see that build 2 is indeed successful. So if we go back to our container registry and refresh, we'll see a new image has been loaded a few seconds ago and has replaced the latest. And we still have our old one. And that was all done for us automatically. Now let's test that one as well. So we'll do the same process we did last time around, where we'll pull an image. Again, this is much faster, since Docker is only going to pull image pieces that have changed. And then we can do our Docker run, once again mapping that port, and let Pet Clinic start up. Then we can swap over to the GUI, hit refresh, and we'll say welcome to Spring Pet Clinic version 2. With that piece successful, we can now move on to the third part of our demo, which will demonstrate how we, oh, <laughs> uh, how we address a JDK CVE. Our first step is to figure out what's affected by this CVE. In your case, you might have a tool that maintains this information or will report it for you. In this case, we're just going to inspect the actual build and we'll see that it used 1102 as the JDK for the build. Meanwhile, our operations team has prepared a new builder config that uses JDK 1103. So now we just need to push that to the Pivotal build service and it will begin to use it in its new image creation. The cool thing to remember here is Pivotal build service is watching the repositories and watching for builder changes. 
so that when you make a change to something like that, we have a new build kicked off. So here we have a new build kicked off for our Spring Pet Clinic. And just like our previous builds, we're going to watch the logs. We'll see this build very quickly. So it just needed to change the layer that contained the JDK. And that's complete. Now we want to verify the success. And then we can look at our container registry. Refresh, and now we see that we have three images. We can do a Docker pull. And let's check the JDK version again. See now that we have JDK 1103. So we successfully mitigated that CVE. We can run the image again. And we have our Spring Pet Clinic UI. And it's all operational just as it was before. So that's our demo for Pivotal Build Service. You can visit pivotal.io and sign up to get access to the alpha version and give it a spin for yourself. <laughs>